so we can admit Han, right? Yeah. No. You can uh, push it over maybe. Sure, sure. <coughs> Danny, uh, just make sure you can see it. Yeah? Yeah. Just move. Alhamdulillah. I think I've uh, gone through this boat together five years ago. And uh, we forget everything. It's terrible. That's why we have to go back and do it regularly. And I remember, subhanAllah, I went to Egypt, to Cairo, and I met with uh, Sheikh Yusri Gabar. You know him. The great uh, Azhari Sheikh. And he gave me ijazah on, uh, on, uh, on a Sira Nabawiyah. Ijazah in Amma, Sira Nabawiyah. Uh, Hafizahullah 2017, and, and we were in Al Hay Al Hay Al It's a it's a neighborhood where it's only in uh, cemeteries. People live in <laughs> live in a cemetery. It's a huge historical place. They're in. Barakallah. Bismillah. So again, this is like a fardu ayn on all of us to get to know who Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is, and to um, to learn about his attributes, physical, uh, everything. His sunnah, his behavior. And last time we went through, uh, it's an introduction, it was an introduction, and again we're going to go through something similar today, very quickly, the lineage. You all know this better than me, Shazakumullah khair. Okay? We have Sayyid Tarrar, we have Sheikh Susi, Tabarakallah alaykum, inshallah. All of you, Tabarakallah, more knowledgeable than me. Nasabahu Sharif. So his, his uh, uh, honorable lineage, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> and we're going to start with Sayyidina Abdullah, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, Ibn Hashim, Hashim Ibn Limana. Uh, and then Ibn Qusay. Uh, Qusay, stop here. Why, why here, stop? <coughs> It goes all the way to, to Adnan. And last mm -hmm. time I told you that Adnan is where Quraysh started. I was wrong. It's where Fir. Fihr is, is where Quraysh started, and there are 12 tribes in Quraysh. Why I want to do five only? Let's just do five and, and, and master it and know it well. And uh, the Shanaqita has have a beautiful <coughs> saying, Man qara al khams lam yans. Man qara al khams at ahzab lam yans al Quran. That's what it means. Those who read five ahzabs, uh, five hizb, so two and a half juz every day, the Quran remains in his mind. So al-arqam lahum khususiyya. Numbers have a special value. As in the hadith and the Prophet the one who says this in the morning, nothing will touch him, who says this in the, at night three times. Uh, the Prophet used to read istighfar a hundred times a day, 70 times, and so on. So al-arqam lahum khususiyya. It's a very special, so this uh, Shaykh Ali Juma says, at least we know five. Let's just know five. So we start with uh, Abdullah. <coughs> and you know uh, who Abdullah is? Abdullah is uh, uh, one of the, how many sons of Abdul Muttalib? Ten. Ten. Huh? Ten. ten or eleven. We said, we said ten, ab ab about that, yes. About ten, uh, ten of them. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Ana banu dhabihayn. I'm the son of the two who were sacrificed or to be sacrificed. If dhabihayn, uh, so the, one of them is Ismail. Correct? Ismail, who's his mother? Hajar. Hajar uh, was uh, a handmaid, handmaid like a slave girl with uh, Sarah. And she's the one that offered Hajar to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And uh, from them came Ismail. And she was from where? Egypt. 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 That's, why, that's why the Egyptians say, Ummud uh, Dunya. You know, we have to, we have to recognize the, the virtues That, uh, that all the nations of the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu gave a special virtue for all these nations. And they say, it was, the uh, Quran was revealed in, <laughs> in, uh, in Arabia, and it was recited in Egypt. Naam, the beautiful reciters, the best reciters. The Quran was preserved, and it was, وَفُسِّرَ فِي الْهِنْدِ وَقُتِبَ فِي تُرْكِيَ It's it, one of those sayings that, that uh, they have extracted. And also there's a lot of virtues about uh, Asham, Wal Yaman, Wal Maghrib. All of those are beautiful virtues that are... Uh, uh, Shaykh, just to clarify, that, that some people think she was 
she belonged to a slave dynasty at Iran. Right. She she was basically from Egyptian, very noble family. Allahu Akbar. Uh, she was only, uh, they call they, that she is slave because uh, she was uh, presented as a present to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam Sahara, and she is known as slave of them, but actually she belongs to a very noble family from Egypt. Jazakumullah. So yes. this is a very important point. Uh, Sayyid Tarar always comes with these very important uh, commentaries, uh, observations. Sara was not uh, from a slave uh, family. She was from a noble. Hajar, Hajar. Uh, sorry, Hajar, sorry. She was from a, a noble lineage. Yes. Barakallahu fiqh. Barakallahu fiqh. Jazakumullah. So <coughs> he, he was, as you know, Sayyidina Ismail, uh, Allah ordered Sayyidina Ibrahim to sacrifice him. And at the last minute, and this is a, a very difficult and very strong uh, commandment. Who can sacrifice his son? And so Allah brought uh, a, a, a sheep, a male sheep, Kipsh, Kipsh Azim, with uh, Akran. It's like a full, strong male ship, sheep. And so he turned and he found a sheep and he sacrificed it. And then we had uh, the sacrifice of uh, Sayyidina Abdullah, and we had several stories. One of them is that uh, Sayyidina uh, Abdul Muttalib wanted to have children, and he made a vow with Allah that if he gave him children, male, that he would sacrifice one of them. And when he gave them these 10 children, he, he did a, you know, a lottery, a lottery, and it fell on Abdullah. And they went to uh, some, some master, uh, but I don't want to say the bad word. So, the, and she told them to do uh, another lottery until they told him not to sacrifice Abdullah, do something and save him. And so he finally, finally paid a hundred, he finally sacrificed a hundred camels, and they saved uh, Abdullah. Sayyidina Muawiyah. Much later, there was a different narration. Uh, they came to Sayyidina Muawiyah, Muawiyah and they asked him about uh, the dhibh, uh, and he told them that. It was about uh, the Bi'r of Zamzam. So that's the other story. So he's, he made a vow with Allah that if he helped him with the, the, the digging of the Zamzam, that he would sacrifice one of his children. But his uncles, the brothers of Abdul Qadr, they all refused. They all were against him. And they told him to, to, uh, to offer 100 camels as a, to save him. And he was very rich. Abdul Muttalib was very rich. As well as Abdul Muttalib, I mean, this hundred, this fidya of a hundred camels became part of the Islamic Sharia. Later on, it was the uh, if you want to save someone or to pay the, the fidya, it is a hundred, hundred uh, camels. Um, and then his father Abdul Muttalib, Abdul Muttalib, uh, he's the one, his, his grandfather, right? His grandfather who passed away when Sayyidina uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was eight years old. He took care of him when, when his mother passed away. Uh, and his name, his real name is what? Shaybatul Hamd. Shaybatul Hamd. And he was born where? In Medina. In Medina. His father had took him, t taken him there because he was doing his, his uh, Rihlat al Shita, it was Saif, and he passed away in Gaza. So Hashim passed away in Gaza. Subhanallah. And, uh, and so Shaybatul Hamd was left in Medina with his uncles. Okay, with his uncles uh, who were Banu and Najjar. Today, when, when they speak about Akhwalul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is not the brothers of his mother. His mother is a Qurayshiyya. Amina uh, is Qurayshiyya. And she didn't have any brothers. <laughs> okay? So the, we're, when we say Akhwalul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his uncles from the mother's side is from uh, Al Medina. So the, the wife of uh, Abdul Muttalib is. So the, She, she's from Amina is not from Medina. Right? Amina is from no no no. Mm -hmm. Amina is from not from Medina. Mm -hmm. It's his uncle. It's from his uh, from Abdul Muttalib. It's the family of Abdul Muttalib. Okay, mm -hmm. that's why she took him. She used to take him to see his uncles there. Akhwalahu, yeah. in Medina. She used to make. It's not hers family. Okay, yeah, family. Banu Najjar, Banu al Najjar. So he passed away in uh, Banu al Najjar, and later on, uh, Al Muttalib, his uncle, Ibn Abd Manaf. Ibn Abd Manaf. Uh, yes, Ibn Abd Manaf. Yeah, Al Muttalib, they both Ibn Abd Manaf. Yeah, right? Just want to make sure. Yeah, 
<coughs> so his uncle went to pick up his his nephew, Shaybat uh, al And when they were entering al, uh, al, al Mecca, uh, they thought that he was his slave because he was uh, he was you know younger than him, and he was uh, uh, coming with him. So they thought he was Abdul Muttalib, and Abdul Muttalib never resisted the idea. It's okay. He's humble. Call me, call me the servant. No problem. But he told him, uh, his uncle Al Muttalib, he told him, Bel Shaybat Al Hamd. His name is Shaybat Al Hamd. But they didn't follow that. They just kept calling him Abdul Muttalib. And here is uh, something interesting because when we say Abdul Muttalib, we should not keep in mind that he is the, the, the worshiper of Al Muttalib. Okay? Rasulullah did not have anyone in his lineage that worshipped any of these idols. In fact, Rasulullah uh, I, made a, I made some notes here that were very uh, interesting because when, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Where did he go? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it from memory. I'm very poor with memory. But when he, when he was a he was a prophet to his people, he changed everything which was not right. So when someone's name was Qalil, he says, no, change it to Kathir. A little bit, no, you're a lot. When someone's name was Hazan, he says, no, make it Sahl, as in the hadith, Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla, wa anta taj'alu al-hazana idha shi'ta sahla. So sufferance, you know, his name is sufferance, no, don't make your name suffer, make it easy. You're, you're, allevi- like you're an alleviation. Someone came with the name of uh, Al As or Abu Al As or Umm Al As, and he would made uh, change. Al As is someone who disobeys. Okay. <laughs> why do you make such a demeaning name? They asked uh, the Arabs, "Why do you make your your uh, your maids beautiful? The name the names of your maids beautiful, and your names of the children <laughs> ugly." He says, "The names of our maids." In our houses is for us, and the names of our children is for the enemies. So we make them tough. Muawiyah, you know. So they make them very, very harsh. So the Prophet did not like that. He changed those things. So he changed the name of uh, Umm Al As into Jamila. Bel inti Jamila. You're beautiful. So he made these changes, and there are numerous accounts of these, but he never said Abdul Muttalib is not Abdul Muttalib, it's Abdullah. In fact, yesterday I met with somebody whose name was Abdul Nabi. Don't, don't let it shock you. No one worships the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to decimate shirk. You can only worship Allah. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasul. So this, this, I think, uh, one sec, one sec. Let, let's, let's hear from... In, the, in Bangladesh, there's a very common name called Ghulam Rasul. Uh, yeah. In Bangladesh, the Ghulam doesn't mean boy. In Bangladesh, Ghulam means slave. Allahu Akbar, yes. So same like, thing, same thing. This is what I wanted to explain that uh, some people have name Abdul Mustafa, Abdul Nabi, yes, and uh, and some people are very angry with that. Yes. So why you have so this Abdul does not mean uh, worshiper. It no. It means uh, slave. slave. The servant. Servant. The employee. The employee. The employee. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. your employee. It's I'm your slave. I'm your servant. So me yeah. also in the beginning I wasn't comfortable with the Ghulam Rasul. No, no. It's okay, right? No. Uh, yesterday I met with someone whose name is Abdul Abdul Nabi, and I told him, "Before we speak, brother, tell me what's with your name. What's what's wrong? What's this?" <laughs> he, he 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 turned very uncomfortable. I told him, "Listen, chill. Uh, your name is the most beautiful name. Allah al He says you're like my father. His father's father was named Abdul Nabi, so he named his son Abdul Nabi. <laughs> I told him, "Relax. It doesn't mean that you worship the Prophet. Abadan, Abadan." In fact, there was a, a great Egyptian scholar whose name is Abdul Nabi. And, and uh, people loved him, but when his books was, were reprinted after his death, they changed the name. You know, he, he was a scholar. We have a great scholar in Egypt. His name is Abdul Muttalib, mm-hmm. a great poet, a great scholar. He's okay. In any case, you avoid it for problems. But if someone is named that way, know full well that Abdul Muttalib was not worshipping Al Muttalib. If someone's name was Abdul Uzza, yes, because those were idols. Abdul Lat, they were idols. So Abdul Muttalib was also called Al Fayyad, someone who's overflowing with generosity. He was also known Sayyid al Batha. 
Sayyid al Badha is the master of Quraysh. Al Badha is the, 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 the downtown of, of Mecca. Al Bitah or Al Badha. Outside of Mecca, Quraysh, Al Zawahir, those Quraysh that lived around Mecca. So he was known as Sayyid al Badha. And he would, uh, uh, he would feed not only the Hujjaj, but anyone who would pass through, travelers. And that's how open minded he was. So you don't have to come here to Mecca just for, for the pilgrimage. If you came just passing to, to eat some food, we offer you food and we offer you drink and we offer you everything. He would feed the, the people and the animals and the birds. He would feed everybody. And he was very, very intelligent and very well spoken and everyone listened to him. And he had a place around the Kaaba that where he sat and no one would sit there. They would respect him. And when he spoke, everyone listened to him. Beautiful voice. Uh, and he also went to do Al Khalwa in Gharu Hira. So this was the, the Sunnah of his fathers, forefathers. Yes, yes, they would do they would go and make khalwa. This is like a, almost a gharizah. Uh, you know, in Mecca, in Mecca, in the Kaaba, only forty years ago, you would have these little spots where people would do al i'tikaf. I, I say it in a very simple terminology, i'tikaf, but it's a khalwa. Outside of Ramadan, they would come and they spend time by themselves facing the Kaaba and praying to Allah and being alone. Only 40 years ago, scholars speak about this. Al Kaaba was, Al Mecca was like this. So this was the, the sunnah of the people, of, uh, of the forefathers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, just to support the, the, the point that we've made last week, that his forefathers were, were not mushrikeen. His lineage was Sharifa, was very honorable. One of the main uh, proofs is the verse in the Quran, وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ You were moving in the loins of those who were making sujood. They were muwahideen. This is, uh, you check the tafsir. And uh, he, would say, he would also say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَمْ أَزَلْ أُنْقَلُ مِنْ أَصْلَابِ الطَّاهِرِينَ إِلَىٰ أَرْحَامِ الطَّاهِرِينَ I, I used to... Uh, I used to move from uh, the loins of, of the Tahirin to the, uh, the Tahirin, and so on. We'll speak about his, uh, the Prophet's, uh, the prophets uh, uh, those who, who, gave, who breastfed him another time. But after Abdul Muttalib, we have Hashim. Hashim, his wife is Selma. And the father of Hashim is Abdul Manaf, and the father of Abdul Manaf is Qusay, and Qusay is Qusay. Uh, during the, the, the this lineage, as you know, in during in, in Quraysh there was uh, the ongoing tradition of pilgrimage from the days of Sidney Ismail, alayhi salam, until. Uh, Adnan and then the lin all of that so that that ritual continued and so when this ritual occurred in Mecca they were responsible they had they had the the uh, the services that was offered to the Hujjaj and these services there were over 15 of them there, we said that there were 12 tribes of Quraysh but there were at least 15 services that was separated and divided between the tribes of Quraysh so that those they don't fight between them there is peace and harmony and love and, and continues to, to, to live there. And the highest one, so there was uh, a sadana and there was uh, a siqaya or rifada or hijaba. Uh, so, a sidana or hijaba, the same thing. A sidana or hijaba is to put the, what do you call those? The curtains. The curtains, the curtains of the Kaaba. And the Prophet took this, this sunnah as well. Rasulullah so when, when he put this, the, the Kaaba, the, the, the curtain on the Kaaba, what happened to, what did Abu Bakr do after him? Did he remove it? No. Impossible. This is Rasulullah's. All right? And when, and that, when Abu Bakr after him, he put the curtain. What happened after him? He put it on the top. He put it on top. Two years. <laughs> and then came Umar. On top. Imagine for 40 or 50 years, they, they kept putting curtains on top of the, of the Kaaba. Allahu <laughs> Alam. 
They kept putting them on and on and on. Allah, Allah, Allah. No one dared to touch the curtain of the Prophet, the curtain of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the curtain of Abu Bakr, the curtain of Umar, and the Tabi'een, right? So uh, at the end, the ulama decided to remove it and to change the curtain every year, right? <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, so you, so you come with, this is called uh, in, in fiqh, al-mustajiddat. These are the new situations that you have to deal with, right? So, <coughs> so as-sidana was siqaya wa rifala. There were three that were the most honorable of the services that Quraysh used to offer. Uh, as-sidana, which is the curtain. Wasiqaya is to offer the water. Warrifada is to offer food to the poor. So the first of all, Sidana al Hijaya, we just spoke about that. <coughs> and in the part of the Sidana and the hijaba is the key. Which is so a lot of those have now disappeared and finished, but this has remained. The others have been undertaken by the Khilafa and the authorities of the land. They offer the food and the drinks and and the, the sitar and so on, but the key has remained in the hands of certain uh, of, of Banu Qusay. So we have also so a siqaya, and siqaya is not just to offer the waters, okay? Not just to bring water from the wells, but they used to put them in pouches of, of leather and put it underneath the cap. Subhanallah. And they do this today. They, used, they do this, they go around and they give water and they, and they uh, spread the, the you know, uh, it's beautiful. This is a really, really wonderful way of showing the rahmah of Allah. Some things like that. When I go there, I find it, I, find, I feel very proud, like I saw the people to fight for this. The Yesham Allah. Thing, giving Zamzam. Yes. Now all those are the poor people that are doing from the, you know, the Bangladesh and Pakistan there. Allah, yes, yes. And Allah is using them to do it. Allah, Akbar. Like it's such a is it, Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, if you go if you go to Mecca today yeah. you will find some of these Indian subcontinent people <laughs> uh, someone who's 70 year old he looks like a 25 because he's always moving and running and he's been there for 40 years cleaning the floor in Mecca or in, in Medina and and they look and he goes to see his family once every year or two or three. But he wants to be there. He wants to be there. Allahu Akbar. And there's a lot of, a lot of beautiful things to say about uh, those who sacrifice. Uh, like in, uh, in Mauritania, in, in many parts of the, the world, uh, people that reach the age of 40, in Morocco as well, uh, other parts of the, the, the Western world, Western African world, they, at 40, they, they say, Khalas, I'm going to go and, and live in Medina. That's it. Yeah, and uh, one brother told me about a, a Mauritanian sheikh. Jazakallah khair. Uh, and he said that uh, at the age of, of 60 or 70, he took permission from his teacher to go and live in Medina. <laughs> Khalas, he's done. <laughs> Ibadah. And the people of Medina themselves, when they reached the age of 40, they used to, Khalas, they would sit in the store, but, uh, you know, you can come and buy if you want, but he's... You find him like this, reading the Quran. At the age of 40, that's all he does. Mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar. It's, it's amazing. The people of, that uh, sacrifice themselves for the sake of Allah. And Allahu Akbar. Anyways, so Ar Rifada, we said this is uh, Quraysh themselves, they used to get together and, and, and uh, put the money together so that when people came to Hajj, the poor ones, they would give, give them food uh, as, as guests of Al Kaaba as guests of the house of Allah. Uh, and, and anyway, so, so we are told that Qusay, we're speaking about Qusay, Qusay was one of them. Before Qusay, this changed from uh, group to group, and finally it, it settled under Qusay and Bani Hashim. Okay? And like I said, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it uh, fell under the authorities, under the Khilafah, authority of Khilafah. Also, uh, what he did, what Qusay did with the, with the permission of the Arabs around there is to build, anyone from his sulala would build a house around the Kaaba, leaving space for tawaf, like far enough, and between each house, enough space for people to go through. <laughs> so, and you see this in old pictures, you will see small houses. All these houses are from the parents of the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, okay, 
So we've spoken about uh, a little bit about them. And then uh, let me uh, go back to something and then we'll, we'll, we'll end here. And, and by the way, we, when I speak about uh, differences of opinion in the Sira, I brought uh, a book called Asna al Matalib fi Najati Abi Talib. Uh, we, a lot of scholars, and we, we respect them very, very much, including Sayyid al Kamli, Habibullah, uh, of the opinion that uh, Abu Talib has passed away, uh, not as a Muslim, but uh, Dahlan, Sheikh uh, of Mecca 150 years ago, 150 years ago, Sheikh al Dahlan. He's like the Ben Baz of today. He wrote a book that shows that Abu Talib pronounced the Shahada, Shahada Tain, before he passed away. This is uh, 150 pages, very beautiful. Again, it's an opinion. And finally, what I want to share with you is uh, again, this comes from one of the teachers of Al Madina, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Abu Bakr al Jazairi. And he's also of the opinion that the parents, Allahu Alam, just shows, it just comes out that way. Haditatu ashab al So now we want to get closer to what happened before the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This happened, it happened in Muharram. What are we now? Near the end of the Hijjah. And then there is Muharram. And then there is Safar. And then there is Rabi' al Awwal. So between Muharram and Rabi' al Awwal is how many months or how many days? Uh, 50. One month and two months. <coughs> so he says 50. This is one of the uh, popular <laughs> opinions. <laughs> Sayyid al Tarrar is like right straight to the point. So between the 13th of Muharram and the 12th of Dhul Hijjah, and uh, this teacher here, Sheikh uh, Al Khudari Bik, quotes, quotes his teacher and he says, It's Rabi' al Awwal 9. It's okay. There are differences of opinion, but the mashhur is Rabi al Awil 12. So between the 13th or the 15th or the 20th, about 50 days, one month, two months, and this is how accurate the historians are about the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi which coincides to April 20th, 571 AD. Okay, some say 572 AD. It's very easy to to, to point out. So what happened in the Haditatul Fid? The event, and they used to, they used to, uh, uh, you know, make make these landmarks, historical landmarks, with these events. The death of of, uh, of one of the great kings was uh, in the eighth year of of, of uh, the prophet's birth, and that's why we, we can we can like uh, jive those numbers, and these numbers are very accurate. <coughs> So uh, this happened in 571 Hijra, April 20th, or uh, 12th with uh, Rabi al Awwal. They, uh, uh, you all know the story better than myself. Jazakumullah uh, khair. They, they wanted to have uh, a house uh, in Yemen because they were jealous of the popularity of, of Kaaba, of Mecca. People used to make Hijra. So uh, why, why did, uh, what's his name, Abraha al Ashram? wanted to do is because he had, the, the opinion was that he had a, a falling with the king of Ethiopia, Habasha. So he wanted to make things right. So he built uh, a place uh, in, uh, in in Yemen. I'm trying to, to remember the name of that. Jazakallah uh, khair. Jazakallah khair. Al-Qalyas, al whatever. Like yeah. So he built this, this uh, house of worship there. And the Arabs, they very, uh, what's the word? The Arab, the Bedouins, they're uh, revolutionaries. They, he went to that house and he did his uh, number two. <laughs> and he wiped it on the walls. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> and the thing is, the thing is, uh, we should not disrespect anyone. But this is what happened. And so Abraha became very angry and he put this army together with elephants? How many elephants? I think it's just one. <laughs> or four, or three. The uh, opinion is just one. One of the opinions, just Mahmoud. A big elephant, name is Mahmoud. And they moved to Mecca. And where were they? On the way to Mecca, these Arabs, you know, uh, not to... These Bedouins 
heard the news travel so fast, they would come. Some people on their own, alone, stop, you cannot, he's doing this to the army. And they would kill him. Little groups would say, stop, you're not going to the Kaaba. They would kill them. So this happened all along, and they killed them, and they killed them until they reached to, uh, to Al Kaaba, to, uh, to Mecca. And where did they stop? What's that place called? Wadi al Muhassir. Wadi al Muhassir is between Mina and Muzdalifa. Since we. Yes, it means Hassara. Uh, Hassara, it means to. Awqa'ahum fil Hassarat. And bit Tashdeed. A Muhassir is he's, he's made them go through terrible, uh, you know, regrets. Okay, Al Muhassir. And this place in Muhassir is between Mina and Muzdalifa. And since we do fiqh, alhamdulillah, fiqh al-hajj, this is the place where you speed up. You have to speed up. If you if you know it, if you know it, there's like a, hopefully there is a sign. It says, Wada Muhassir, come on, move. And Rasulullah sallallahu he said, uh, they said that, anna nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, awda'a, awda'a, meaning asra'a, fihi qadru rami hajra. If you throw a rock, how much does it go? 100 meters? So it's about a distance of 100 meters. He would just go a little bit faster. Because this is where Allah's punishment had come down on these people. So you, want, you don't want to be in a place too long where Allah has punished. His wrath has descended upon them. He has burned them. He has, a'udhu billah, what has happened to them. So uh, when they arrived there, they were stopped. Mahmoud fell on the ground. The animals fell to the ground. No one were able to move. And <coughs> uh, who was it? Abdul Muttalib that came out to him? Yes. Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib came out to him. He was very rich. And he was the master of his people. But when he went out to him, very, very proud, very confident. In fact, when Abraha saw him, he, got, he, he was afraid of him. He, he feared. He feared him because the way. I don't care. What are you going to do to me? Allah is with me. And uh, this sheikh here, Sheikh Abu Bakr Zairi, he quotes beautiful poems that he recited, asking Allah to protect his house. Okay? Beautiful poems, mashallah. So he told him, uh, listen, I want my, my ibil. So he, as, as they were traveling towards uh, Mecca, they were taking people's uh, properties, and so as they arrived, they took 200 of Abdul Muttalib's camels. <coughs> and he told them, I want my camels. He said, you come all the way here for your camels? Aren't you the master of the <laughs> Beit Allah? He says, the Beit Allah has a lord. You know? He has a lord. This is the famous, Inna lil bayti, Inna lil bayti rabban yuhmihi, or yahmihi. Allah is the, is the protector of al Bayt. I want my camels. He says, take your camels. And I think it, he gave him, that's when he gave him what? <laughs> yes, yes. Baraka. Baraka. Um Ayman. Um Ayman. Yeah, Baraka. Baraka. And then we'll speak about her as well. This is very powerful. The, the, be the beauty of those who were with Rasulullah and the Baraka that came out from them. And he used to call her Ummi Bada Ummi. You know? <coughs> so he gave him. Uh, Baraka, take Baraka, take your camels and, and leaves. And so when Abdul Muttalib saw all of this, he told his people to go to the mountains because Mecca is in the valley. And he told them to go to the Shu'ab, Shu'ab of Mecca. There's a famous saying, Ahlul Mecca adra bi shi'abiha. The people of Mecca know the, the holes, they, and they know the, the, the neighborhoods. But Shi'ab is the, the caves that go into the mountains where people live. No one can, can hurt you. Like this, and you would, would go in, you'd be perfect safety. So he says, go into those shab, or in the, in, the, on, in the top of the mountains, and then wait. And they saw, Tayra Ababid. Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka fi ashabi al-fil. Alam yaj'al kaidahum? Wa? Tayra Ababid. Subhanallah. And so they were all destroyed. A few of them were left. A few of them, uh, they said, yeah, please help us. Show us the way back. Imagine, they didn't know how to go back. Show us the way back. And who was live? Abraha. Abraha 
stayed alive until he arrived back to Al Yemen and he passed away there. Apparently, the chieftain of this army, besides, he, he remained alive until much later. The chief? The chief of the army, the captain, the general. The general. And he became blind. And even Aisha radiallahu anha saw him. Subhanallah. He realized. Allah, this is a, a sign for all of us. And so this is what happened in Naam al Fil. And we'll stop here. Jazakumullah khair. Wa barakallahu fikum wa sallallahu wa sallama. Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. We'll stop the tasjid and we can keep. Yeah, let's keep ending. He'll tell you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, jazakumullah khair, barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum. Barakallahu fikum, jazakumullah. Excuse me, like he lost his army, but he, I heard like he got like skin disease, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like crippled by the army. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Jazakumullah khair. Jazakumullah khair, Sidi. So, Allah.